Hi, I'm Valerie Obazi. I'm the CEO of R&R Luxury and I'm a mother, I'm a wife and I'm an entrepreneur and I am building Beyond Borders. Starting R&R and where we are now, it's been 12 years but it's been a steady journey. It's been a journey of ups and downs, highs and lows and realizations. You come to all sorts of conclusions as you go along because to be honest, R&R, when we started as a skincare brand coming out of Nigeria at the time, it was pretty unheard of. There weren't many brands that were doing that, that were taking our natural resources and turning them into a finished product with branding um, for Nigeria and the rest of the world. And um, it's been a steady process. So we've learned as we go along, you know, we didn't have any predecessor to kind of learn from. So as we've gone, we've learned more and more about the ways we do things, what can be done better, and just learning more about our people, our ingredients, and how to get the product, you know, into the hands of as many people as possible. We were very intentional about creating a brand that would sit comfortably on the shelves in the international market. But um, we thought that our main market would be global in the Western world, in the UK and the US. But actually when we came out, the demand, a lot of demand came from the local market. So we were shocked to find out that there was so much demand that people were really interested in what we were doing locally and actually ended up taking so much more of our time than we expected. And so the global rollout has been a lot more delayed, should I say, than what we initially expected because we thought immediately, you know, the Western world understands the need for natural products and they were very much into organic at the time. And um, so when I started r and I thought, okay, this will be great, we'll be exporting mainly. But it turned out that no, when the local market discovered what we were doing, they were like, this is great. You know, we love the products and this is homegrown. You know, I find in Nigeria, people really like to support made in Nigeria products and it wasn't something that was really being done and put out in the way that we were putting it out there. So um, we received so much support in the local domestic regional market that it ended up taking up most of our time. Globally we've done that slowly and surely and we're getting out there for sure but definitely our main markets are still Nigeria and Ghana. I think as a woman in business you just have to be open to what comes to you because no day is the same. Every day will bring new challenges, new questions, new thoughts or new kinks to your process. So you just have to be willing to work around them and do what you can to get over the next hurdle. So you have to be open and you have to be pretty selfless because a lot of the decisions I make are not about me. They're about the people that work in the team and the also the person that uses our products at the end of the day. You have to be thinking about those people. And so it's not really about what type of woman I have to become. I think I have to really put myself in the shoes of either my team members or my end user and think, what do they want? And I think that that calls to being open and definitely being willing to take on challenges because the challenges will definitely come <laughs> and there'll be many, so you just have to be ready to face them as and when they come, yeah. I think the major challenge that we face as African entrepreneurs based on the continent, not diasporans, is that we struggle when it comes to gaining global recognition. Um, it's very difficult for people to believe that good quality can come from Africa. That narrative is slowly changing. You can thank social media and the openness, the global village that we've become, but at the same time, when people are used to having things set in a certain way, used to working with certain factories, you have to do a lot more work to kind of encourage them to believe that your quality is as good as those that they're used to working with. So I think that as Africans based on the continent, if you're serving the larger market, you have to do a lot more work to kind of get them behind what you're doing and get them to believe in your products. Um, I would say to that woman that thinks that they're limited by being in Africa, that they don't know the promise of where they are, the potential of what they have. You know, for many, many years, we were made to believe that nothing good comes from Africa, that we're kind of like the last stop 
when it comes to anything. But having lived abroad and come back home, I realized that there are many gaps in, the, in, in various industries that need to be filled and it requires Africans to fill those. It, we understand the nuances, we understand the needs and people coming from outside won't necessarily, they'll see the gaps, but they won't know how to fill them. And it takes Africans to do that. So I think that people shouldn't be in a rush to leave. I think that the world is looking at the continent now so we need to show them our best and put the best out there and people will be willing to take it and soon i don't believe that people will be needing to leave to experience anything the whole experience is here you've seen what's happening in ghana right people hundreds of thousands of people are traveling in fact maybe millions over the year but i mean during the christmas period alone hundreds of thousands of people are flying into ghana um, over the course of two weeks and it's because they realize that the story that they've been sold for, I don't know, 100 years is not true and that really there is beauty here. Of course, we need refining, there's work that needs to be done, but it's going to take our generation and the generations that come after us to change that narrative. And I know that we're a beauty brand, so people may see it as, you know, a superficial thing, but through beauty, we can change the perception of what Africa has and we'll need the people in Africa to help us do that. So they shouldn't leave, please. <laughs>